In this part, we will discuss the forces and moment on an airfoil and see how to read airfoil plots to extract relevant data in order to choose an airfoil. Let's get started. An airfoil generates lift when it moves through the air. This lift is perpendicular to the free stream flow and not to the airfoil cord line. Lift is the force that keeps an aircraft in the air against gravity. Drag is the resistance force experienced by the airfoil. It acts parallel to the flow, and like lift, it is defined relative to the flow and not to the cord line. In addition to the lift and drag, the airfoil produces a turning force that pushes its nose up or down. This turning force or torque exists even when the airfoil is at an angle where no lift is being produced. This torque is called the zero lift pitching moment. The pitching moment is a crucial parameter while designing an aircraft because it affects the trim drag and wing's structural loads. The aerodynamic center is defined as a point on the cord about which the pitching moment does not change with angle of attack. Another way of looking at it is that the aerodynamic center is the point on the cord where the lift is considered to act. Let's see why this point is important to us. When an airfoil moves through the air, the velocity of the air varies over the airfoil surface. The air flowing over the top surface speeds up compared to the air flowing near the bottom surface. This variation in velocity causes a variation in pressure over the airfoil surface. The differences in the pressure distribution between the upper and lower surfaces primarily contribute to the lift force. Actually, the shear stress distribution and pressure distribution together give us the total aerodynamic force, but for simplicity we will stick to the lift force component here. You can watch this video by the efficient engineer for a more in-depth representation. We can consider this force to act through the average location of the pressure on the surface of the object. We call the average location of the pressure variation the center of pressure in the same way that we call the average location of the weight of an object the center of gravity. This pressure distribution around the object also imparts a torque, or moment, on the object. However, there is a problem here. If we change the angle of attack of the airfoil, the pressure distribution changes, which results in a change in the lift force and the location of center of pressure and the moment. So determining the aerodynamic behavior of an airfoil is very complicated if we use the center of pressure to analyze the forces. Using the aerodynamic center as the location where the aerodynamic force is applied eliminates the problem of the movement of the center of pressure with angle of attack in aerodynamic analysis. The aerodynamic center of an airfoil at subsonic Mach numbers is at or near 25% of the cord. The aerodynamic center does not move as angle of attack changes as long as the airfoil is not stalled. Now let's discuss the aerodynamic coefficients, CL, CD, and CM. The forces being generated by an airfoil are dependent on several factors like its shape, cord, angle of attack and the airspeed and altitude at which the wing is flying. Due to the large number of variables, it is difficult to compare different airfoils. This is why scientists developed a system to define the behavior of an airfoil strictly in terms of its shape and its angle of attack. The characteristics of the airfoil are put into a non-dimensional form. That is, a form independent of the physical dimensions of the airfoil. These non-dimensional numbers describing the characteristics of the airfoil are called aerodynamic coefficients. There are three of these, one for each force and one for the moment. I will not go into the derivation of coefficients here, we only discuss the practical use of the coefficients to pick an airfoil. Now, we can directly compare the coefficients of different airfoils to understand their behavior. For example, we can compare the lift coefficient of two different airfoils using their respective plots. We will look into these plots in more detail later in this video. Consider the lift equation shown here. This is the basic lift equation which allows us to calculate lift if we know the wing area, lift coefficient, airspeed, and altitude. The lift coefficient is a number that aerodynamicists use to model all of the complex dependencies of shape, inclination, and some flow conditions on lift. This equation will be important in our later discussion of airfoil characteristics. The drag coefficient is defined similarly to the lift coefficient, and drag can be calculated using this equation. The definition of the pitching moment coefficient is a little different from the definition of CL and CD. A moment has the units of a force times a distance, so it is necessary to divide it by a reference length as well as a reference area and dynamic pressure to non-dimensionalize it. The reference length used is the wing cord. As we saw earlier, the pitching moment about the aerodynamic center does not change with angle of attack, which is why the pitching moment coefficient of an airfoil is presented in the form of CM about the aerodynamic center or about the quarter cord. If CM is positive, the moment is nose up and if it is negative, the moment is nose down. Most airfoils have negative pitching moment about the aerodynamic center. 
Here is a way to determine a value for the lift coefficient. In a wind tunnel, we can set the velocity, density, and wing area and measure the lift produced. Through division, we arrive at a value for the lift coefficient. We can then predict the lift that will be produced under a different set of velocity, density, and area conditions using the lift equation. When an airfoil is tested in a wind tunnel, its measured characteristics are tabulated in the form of lift, drag, and pitching moment coefficients. This information is presented in series of plots that enable the designer to use the data easily. Let us see how to read these plots. In this plot, we can see the variation of CL, CD, and CM with respect to the angle of attack. This type of plot is very useful, particularly in determining the stall speed, trim characteristics, and required wing incidence of an airplane. We can use CL versus angle of attack and CD versus angle of attack plot separately to analyze an airplane, but there exists a better way. Using the lift equation, we can rearrange and easily calculate the lift coefficient the airplane is flying at for a given airspeed and altitude. It is therefore common to plot CD against CL. This type of plot has CD on one axis and CL on the other and is referred to as the airfoil's drag polar. This polar is the most useful form of airfoil data for the calculation of airplane performance. Let's look at these plots more closely. This is a plot of the lift coefficient versus the angle of attack. We can easily see here the maximum lift coefficient the airfoil can generate. CL max is the lift coefficient at which the airfoil stalls. Higher the CL max of the airfoil, lower its stall speed. Stall speed is a very important metric for the safety of the aircraft and it also influences the takeoff and landing speed. Generally, we want a low enough stall speed value for shorter takeoff and landing and for safety reasons. The corresponding value of AOA at which we have CL max is simply the stall angle of attack. The angle of attack at which the airfoil has zero lift is the point at which the curve intersects the x-axis. The lift coefficient at any angle of attack can be read from this plot. This is important when deciding the incidence angles at which flying surfaces are to be attached to the fuselage. The plot is useful in determining the stall characteristics and incidence angles, but it gives us no information about the drag of the airplane and hence is not very useful in calculating the performance of the airplane. The CD versus AOA plot is generally not used for analyzing performance of an airplane because the angle of attack depends on other factors not related to the airfoil. Instead, we use the drag polar. The drag polar is much easier to use because it is easy to determine the lift coefficient at which the airplane is flying using this equation. To calculate CL, we need to know only the airspeed, the wing loading and the density of the air at the desired altitude. Once we know the CL value, we can directly find the CD value. This CD is only the parasitic drag and does not include the induced drag. That's because induced drag depends on the span and planform shape of the wing and not on the airfoil. Using the drag polar, we can find out what the minimum drag coefficient of the airfoil is, and we can determine at what lift coefficient the airfoil has its minimum drag. This is important in airfoil selection as we can now choose an airfoil that is at or near its minimum drag when the airplane is flying at its desired cruise speed. This can be done by calculating the cruise lift coefficient of the airplane by the process shown here and choosing an airfoil that has its minimum drag at this lift coefficient. We discussed a lot of things in this video, and here are some of the key takeaways. Of course, there are other things to consider while selecting an airfoil, like the pitching moment. We will discuss the pitching moment in detail in the upcoming videos. That's it for this part. In the next part, we will look at the different types of stall and how camber and thickness of an airfoil affect its lift, drag and stall pattern. So subscribe to the channel for the latest updates on this airfoil design series. Thank you for watching.